Jun with Orange Modworks, and today we're going to be installing the aluminum plunger body and the 1730 seconds aluminum barrel from the Orange Modworks workshop. Now these are not kit items, they're aimed to be raw materials for advanced modders who want to really push this platform to the limit. We're talking uh, 200 FPS plus spring builds using basically any spring you can fit in there. Now, there are no kit parts that are directly compatible with these components. These are aimed at people who are fabricating their own components or sourcing fabricated components for these builds. This plunger tube is a, uh, has a larger diameter than the stock plunger tube, and this barrel is essentially the exact same di uh, dimensions as 17 30 seconds brass, just lighter and less expensive because it's made out of aluminum. The inside is just as polished as brass, uh, so that goes for both these components. So these are just raw components for your mods. Now that being said, if you wanted to tackle a build like this, we will be offering the stage two bolt sled and plunger rod as standalone components in the near future. As of the making of this video, they are not available, but they will be. So to build out these components, you will need a bolt sled, plunger rod, you will need a breech and plunger head that is compatible with this tube. For most people out there, that means you're going to be making your own or fabricating your own in some way. Now, for the Orange Workshop, we will be offering 3D printed components for builds such as this, starting with the long shot. Now, keep in mind that these are raw components. They're not meant to be kit parts. They're not built to the same standards as the injection molded kit parts. However, they are very high quality 3D printed components using an SLA printer in durable material. They're not super rigid. They flex ever so slightly along their thinner axes and can handle tons of impact. You're not gonna break these parts. However, they may wear down over time when using uh, the aluminum components. So to start off, uh, we'll also have um, various other components for the long shot available as individual parts. That'll be springs, O-rings, the smaller springs like the trigger catch spring, the main O-ring, yeah, we got trigger catch. Uh, trigger springs possibly coming to the store. All is uh, sort of hardware components. I'm going to set these aside for now. Uh, and the trigger catch, I believe, will also be sold as a standalone part. So to tackle this build and to sort of introduce these 3D printed components, I'm going to be using our 20 kilogram spring, a 3D printed chamber, plunger head, breech, and spring rest. Now the spring rest is just that, a spring rest. Um, don't expect it to fasten itself to the shell in any way. It's going to rest here in the back of the plunger body and brace against the shell. And that's going to keep your spring uh, compressed onto the plunger rod just like a normal kit. So all of these components are larger in diameter to fit this uh, plunger body. Um, I have pre-drilled this to prevent vacuum loading. However, when you receive these parts, they are raw. The edges are sharp. The inner edges are uh, less sharp than the outer edges, but it's really going to be up to the end user to finish off these components, just like if you were buying um, brass from a variety of hardware websites. It just comes to you as is. Now for this build, I have prepared a 12 inch barrel. The orange workshop barrels will ship in 18 inch lengths. And these are good for, um, you can do two sort of sleeper long shot barrels or one longer one, plus you'll have some left over for other builds. You can make a couple, maybe three retaliator barrels out of this if you were doing a sealed breach retaliator or alpha trooper or rampage or if you were sleeving um, you know hammer shots 
or night finders, that sort of thing. This is a uh, sort of general use 17 30 seconds outer diameter barrel. So I'm going to set the raw one aside for now and start to tackle the build. So for this one, we have these four. 3D printed components, which will be available in the workshop. They are relatively unfinished. I just finished curing these this morning. You know, they're where the support material was, they're still a little rough. I'm not really going to clean them up for this build. It's pretty much good to go as is. However, if you want to, a pair of flush cuts will take care of the little nibs where the support material was, or I prefer to use a small um, box cutter or hobby knife. You just come down and slice off little nibs if you care about that sort of thing. The working areas where it seals, where the o-rings go, are basically free of um, support material. There's a little bit right in here, but none where the o-ring sits. Now, that being said, 3D printed components are very good these days, but there will be some uh, sort of artifacts left over from the printing process. It's up to the end user to finish off these parts and sort of customize them for their purposes. So I've already pre-sanded out where the plunger rod's gonna go just to make sure I have good clearance. Um, I've inspected the grooves for the O-rings to make sure there's no weird artifacts. And there's a little bit, sort of a ramp right here. It's not gonna bother anything, but you can always you know, cut it down. Um, the inner areas of this have been uh, filleted, so the O-rings will hold in place. Now the breech, as you can see, uses a dual O-ring setup. And I have a finished one here. Uh, this one, I put some Teflon tape on because I was just experimenting with fit. And that's something that you may consider. You want to have high friction with this part, low friction with the plunger head, because this needs to move as fast as possible where this needs to be uh, have an incredibly good seal with the front of the plunger body. Just like that. This is ungreased, by the way, so it won't be that hard um, when you install it for real. So to sort of lay everything out, reach up front like so. You have your larger plunger head, no O-ring yet. This plunger head will also fit the stock um, plunger rod. So if you don't want to buy a stage 2 plunger rod, you don't have to. And in my experience, the stock plunger rod is uh, generally doesn't break. Really, you just need to watch out for where the screw goes, because the rest of this rod in the stock version is really tough, but you may snap off where the screw sits. So like that, the spring, of course, compresses in the middle there. I'm going to hold that out for now just for this mock-up. That gets loaded in when you install it to your blaster. We have the chamber up front that friction fits this barrel like so. Um, you can sand out the inside and scuff it up if you choose to use um, like epoxy or some uh, slow drying glue for this. I would strongly recommend not using super glue because you'll get about this far in and everything will be locked up. In my experience, epoxy, uh, goop, um, and like Large cements or rubber cements will stick to this 3D printed material, but test your glue. Not all glue will stick to this stuff. So it goes like so, and that's sort of the layout in the blaster, but of course with the barrel installed and your bolt sled. So this is a pusher design only. If you want to shoot long darts, stick with the stage one and two kits. They're essentially ideal for shooting full length darts or simply uh, put a you know, 14 kg spring with a better trigger catch and maybe a bolt sled in a stock long shot for your all of your long dart needs. All right, so moving on. For this build, I'm going to use these components. And I'm gonna sort of walk through how I've been assembling these and testing these. So the first thing you're going to want to do is find where your plunger um, seals against. Uh, we'll find how far back your plunger rod moves when you prime. You'll have to mock up and test. Um, I'm not going to 
give you my dimensions here because I'm not sure what people are doing with regards to this part because you know if you have a longer breach things are going to move back further or less far and so on so you're going to want to put a hole where the pl right in front of where the o-ring is going to seal like that because when you prime forward to load a dart into the breach it's going to form a very very strong vacuum and you won't be able to prime forward so I put a hole in that with a 2.5 millimeter drill bit and then sanded it on the inside with 2000 grit wet dry paper, wet dry sandpaper. High grit sandpaper is your friend for this build because you are also going to want to take a small piece of sandpaper and sort of fold it into a cone shape like this and work the inside of your barrel and the edge of the plunger body. If you sand the inner lip here to where it is smooth and doesn't grab your finger, your breech will last much longer because it is going to be sealing against the barrel like so, and it's a little friction fit. And on a sharp breech, you'll notice it shaving bits of plastic off of this 3D printed part. But with this sanded breech, polished breech, nothing. It's good to go. You can always throw on some lubrication there as well if you so desire. All right, so moving forward, we're gonna take the chamber and the barrel, this is a 12 inch barrel. It should achieve velocities around 220 to 250. You can experiment depending on your dart. Um, anywhere between nine and 12 inches. You know, the beauty of purchasing these in 18 inch lengths is you can experiment. However, with a long shot, if you plan on experimenting, I would start with a 14 inch barrel and cut down from there. We've noticed you see massive diminishing returns if you are using a barrel much longer than 12, but your mileage may vary. And I'm not using glue. I'm just going to uh, twist this sucker down in there with considerable difficulty because it's forming a airtight seal. Oh, my table. I may have to do this off camera. Well, or not. You want the barrel to go all the way to the edge. Whew. Maybe wear gloves when you do it. Do this at home. All right. Not too painful. Just a little. You can see some 3D printed material got sheared off. There we go. Oh yeah, here you can see how flexible this uh, plastic is. At these thin dimensions here, it'll flex, which is great when you have a thick piece like this because it won't shatter. Um, I've, man, I've shot hundreds, probably fewer than a thousand rounds with my other test long shot, but I've yet to break one of these components. And actually the test one I'm using was a two part breach. These uh, single part breaches are much, much stronger. And next, we're going to take our O-rings. You need three long shot sized O-rings. These are all available. Um, they'll be available in the workshop hardware section soon on our website. And when you install the O-rings, you'll notice that they are much smaller than the breech. They're going to stretch and fit over these components. And if you are chasing that perfect seal, you don't want to just pop it on here and roll it on. You're going to end up with a twisted O-ring. You want to work it around the edge and bring it straight down and let it untwist. You don't want to twist in there because where that twist is will change the outer diameter and it will have less of a perfect seal with the plunger body. So visually inspect it. You can easily see it when it's twisted up because all the O-rings have a seam on them, and that seam, you know, forms a spiral when they're twisted. So we're going to go from this, from the front this time, with the second one. So we're going to put one one side in the lip. You're going to grab it and stretch it into its groove. Don't just roll it in there. Visually inspect it and let it down. You can see there's a little bit of a twist there. Not too bad. 
I'm just going to untwist it. You can use a flathead screwdriver or fingernails if you got them. I'm just going to pop up under here like that, slide it through, and then roll the O-ring into place and it will just lay flat. That looks good. Same thing with the plunger head. Plunger head has uh, a deeper groove here. It's a slightly smaller inner diameter than this part because we want it to seal, but we don't want that absolute heavy friction fit. So I'm gonna pin it down on one side and work it into the groove, making sure it's not twisted. I can see the seam and let it down. There we go, perfect. I'm gonna grab the plunger screw, plunger head screw, the bolt sled pin. All right, so now this plunger rod um, has, I took this from a different build, so it has previously had this plunger head screwed on and taken off, which means there are threads cut inside. If you're doing this for the first time, I would recommend using a larger screwdriver than you would normally new, use for Nerf screws because uh, this screw is a little larger and I would recommend screwing it in like this. This is easy because this has been done before in this plunger rod, but I recommend screwing it in and taking it out maybe two or three times. And that'll save you a lot of headache when you're trying to wrestle that 20 kilogram spring and, and screwing it down with one hand. But if you can get a friend to help you or maybe clamp it in a vise, you know, that makes things a lot easier. So I'm gonna set these up here and with great difficulty, I may have to do this off camera. These 20 kilogram springs are no joke, guys. If you're doing a build with this, just, I mean, you're gonna have a monster on your hands. Also, for the sake of this build, I am just using stock priming handles. I do recommend using a pump grip. However, the pump grip I was planning on using in this mod uh, snapped in half during uh, spring testing, because it was just a 3D printed one that I whipped up. But you guys out there running pump grips that you've gotten from various places, they should handle it just fine. Just beware if you're using a 3D printed version. Okay, there we go. Now that's good and snug. Um, another modification for uh, this plunger head for the 3D printed components is the area where the screw goes is much thicker than on a stock one because in earlier uh, versions during testing, the 20 kilogram spring would just tear the plunger head off the plunger rod. So yeah, it's a uh, minimal, really minimal effort. So just to sort of recap, with using these 3, 3D printed components, this spring retain retainer, um, I pre-sanded the inner uh, circle to make sure it doesn't grip the plunger rod. Um, this sort of clear material can be a little grippy, um, you know, as, it, as everything cures up. So just keep in mind, you know, sanding and little, little bits of finishing here and there may be necessary um, while building with, actually will be necessary while building with these 3D printed components. Other than that, this was just press fit. Everything else was just as it is. Um, and actually, I have an example here. This is another spring retainer. This is what they look like when they come out of the printer. So all this little support stuff, you just tear it off or cut it off and then go back and sand down the little nubs if you so choose. Okay, so next step. We will be greasing this heavily. This is totally dry on the inside. They are cleaned as they come from the manufacturer. There is no oil, like they're aluminum, you know, sometimes with steel components, you know, they ship with a thin coat of oil, that, that sort of thin thing. So you don't need to clean these parts, but you will need 
to add a lot of grease. You can use silicone, um, the Orange Mod Works white lithium grease, which will also be avail available. Our grease is a plastic safe white lithium with a PTFE in there, and you're going to want a lot of it. If you use a silicone grease, uh, you, that's fine. I found that the plumber stuff is a little too thick for you know high speed builds. They'll slow down slows down your plunger just a little bit. You want a more liquidy sort of silicone. And anything with uh, Teflon in it works really well for this sort of application. I'm gonna get a very light. Notice I put a lot in the plunger rod. I'm just putting a light coat on the O-rings. Okay, so I pre-drilled this hole. This side, the non-hole side, is where your breech goes. There we go. See, that's that makes a huge difference. That's really easy. And we'll use the breech with its dual O-ring goodness to spread that grease around. And if you want a tighter fit, Teflon tape is your friend. You can adjust how the o-ring seals for any occasion. Just going to add the excess back inside, grab the plunger, plunger rod, and test it out. Okay, now this is what I'm talking about when I say you want a tight fit. So notice very little resistance with this plunger rod, but oh my gosh, the seal. The seal is really awesome. I mean, that, oh, this sucker, um, I'll definitely demonstrate it when it's all built, but you can prime this blaster without a dart, seal it up, put your thumb over the barrel. I think the record, when everything was all new, we just, I think we held it for like 30 seconds, let your thumb off the barrel and just went, psh, letting the rest of the air out. It forms a great seal. I was skeptical at first when, uh, you started working with these 3D printed parts, but for these sort of hot rod builds where you're probably, where, where you really have to know what you're doing and are probably going to be rebuilding your blaster a lot, they work great. Okay, so everything from here on out is kind of like doing a stage two kit installation. Let me get this oily paper towel out of here. All right, so now we're back to something that looks a little more familiar. We're just going to pop everything together. Ooh, I hope this uh, pin will go in. There's another another thing with the 3D printed parts. You may need to drill out your pin holes to true everything up. And I have not done that, so we're gonna cut right here. All right, guys. So I hadn't drilled out this breach yet, like I said, all these parts were just fresh off the printer, right out of being cured. So what you're going to want is a three millimeter bit, and you are going to just true up this hole in the breach right here. I'm going to do this off camera to keep the table clean. Just like that. And the reason you need to true that hole up is when we have these, um, small diameter holes, depending on the orientation of the part. You know, we're orienting these for maximum accuracy at this edge. This is the important bit that's sealing. So we've been experimenting with orientation. We're not using the, like, the suggested orientation in our printing software. We, I've been tweaking this and getting this little lip up here in such an angle that it comes out true every time. Because of that, we'll get a tiny bit of sag up inside where the pin goes, but that's fine. Just drill it out with a three millimeter bit or a whatever that is in inches. I don't know off the top of my head. It just has to be close, not perfect. Get everything to line up and drive your pin in. We've established that this table isn't good for pressing into, so I'm gonna do this off camera. go. 
Um, I like to press pins down at the table. It works really well if you're doing a lot of these um, over and over again. But if you have vice grips or a pair of adjustable pliers, you can just drive the pin in. All right, and from here, let's see, here's our assembly. Goes in like that. I'm going to test our seal by putting my finger over the edge and just pushing the plunger. Yeah, look at that. Now that is a good seal. If everything goes to plan, um, and the darts that I plan on using agree with this barrel, this could be a 250 plus system right here. So from here, you're gonna take your long shot. I have stripped out all of the unnecessary components. That means the dart tooth assembly. That's gone. You don't need it anymore. It's being replaced with this. That's the spring, the chamber, the dart tooth itself. Take it out, save it somewhere. Now you may be wondering why I have some tape on this barrel. Um, for the video, I pre-fit this barrel and the tape is so it will fit inside of the plastic barrel here. If you don't use this plastic barrel, that's fine. Your aluminum barrel will just be out here like so and for the most part it'll be held straight but without this and the tape holding it in place see, make sure you can see that you'll get a little bit of wobble and that's just the nature of these um, brass barrel or uh, aluminum barrels that are at smaller diameter so most people myself included will wrap a couple layers of masking tape on there just so it loosely fits inside the plastic barrel and there's a recess here, just like the stock uh, chamber for the plastic barrel to fit in. On a 3D printed part, it'll sort of run into it. And you just pop it in like that. There's the overlap. That keeps everything centered. When you install this, you want to visually inspect down the muzzle end where the plastic barrel is. You want to sort of make sure your aluminum barrel is centered in that plastic barrel and we're good if you're way off to one side or the other redo your tape you want this aluminum barrel centered um, or your gun will shoot your blaster will shoot off to one side and if it's a little off don't worry because uh, when you sandwich it in the shell the shell will like center everything up so you want these two tabs to be in like so and now it's just assembly as usual. I'm going to leave the uh, jam door out because with short darts, um, jams tend to happen more frequently. And we go in. The bolt sled is in its grooves. And for the tricky part, let me double check, make sure I'm centered on the camera. All right, plunger rod in. Plunger body will come forward and brace against the shell, like so. So this plunger body is ever so slightly shorter than the maximum uh, distance for fit right here. It is about two millimeters shorter than this shelf. That gives a little bit of room for the uh, spring rest. And it also gives room for the end user if they want to push the spring rest inside, or if you want to fabricate your own spring rest out of FDM printing components that brace against the shell, there is enough room for you to do that with this plunger rod. And I'm gonna see if I can rotate that. Let me rotate this plunger rod, or plunger body, excuse me, so you can see the I hope I'm rotating it the right way. Pop it back out. Rotate, rotate, rotate. There is our air hole to prevent vacuum loading. And yes, this is necessary. This is 100% necessary, or you will not be able to prime your blaster forward. The seal is that good. I'm going to leave the priming indicator there without it, without the little barrel. Now, you'll notice the spring reten retainer is sticking out. That is just going to happen. There, it's not attached to the shell in any way. It's not attached to this plunger rod. 
when you assemble your shell, you're going to have to come in the top with a flathead and just pop it in so the shell can slip and close. And then it's just like any other blaster. And as you can see, it's trying to pop out. So I'm going to hold this down with one hand and fish around for my trigger catch, trigger spring, and catch spring. I'm going to go for the trigger first. I have one of our metal triggers. And a quick note about the catch spring, or the trigger spring. These will be available in the shop. They are slightly heavier than the stock spring. And the reason for that is because our metal triggers are heavier than stock triggers. But as sort of an added bonus, it makes it less of a hair trigger. Um, if you're not running a 3D printed trigger guard, and you're running around with a 20 kilogram primed blaster, a unintentional and negligent discharge is the last thing you want. So a little heavier trigger spring doesn't hurt anyone. You're not exactly going to be shooting fast with a pump action 20 kg long shot. So I may have to get up in front of the camera here or do this off camera. Uh, another thing, this gets tricky. The chamber tends to sort of roll around. So really make sure everything's flat, flat in there. Bolt sled is good. Rotate that. I'm gonna get up into the camera. I'm gonna hold the bolt sled in the magwell. Pop it in. All right, we're good. Except here, it's not working. I'm gonna rotate the blaster. All right, I'm gonna find the spring retainer. I'm gonna push the spring retainer into place. Bam. And it snaps right on down. Looks good, everything looks centered. Now what I'm gonna do before I put the screws in, I'm gonna brace with the, the butt of the shell against my chest. I'm gonna grab the bolt sled. I'm just gonna move it about an inch. And the reason for this is the chamber area isn't as rigid as a stock chamber. You need to make sure nothing is weirdly canted to one side. You need to make sure the bolt sled's fully seated. Um, as long as everything is seated and there's no uh, weird stresses, everything's fine. But if you notice some, it's like this doesn't want to move, take it apart, reseat everything. Just make sure it moves about an inch, just like that. You don't need, you don't need to go for a full prime before you uh, get the screws in. So I'm going to cut here, put the screws in, and we'll go out for a, uh, we'll do a test. We'll test the seal here on the table, and then we're going to take this blaster over the crony and uh, see what we're getting velocity-wise. All right, so here she is. We've got all the screws in that matter. You know, of course, we've got all the screws here in the back, one in the handle, one here, one just forward of the bolt sled, and one up here at the uh, front of the blaster. So I'm going to go ahead and test prime this, which is going to be quite difficult with this priming handle. I cannot stress enough, you will, if you're running a 20 kilogram spring, or actually anything past uh, 10 kilograms, you're going to want a pump grip. So for purposes of this video, I'm going to brace this against my chest, use both hands, and prime. And let's see, okay, there we go. And now that it's primed, you'll see how smooth everything is great. There's no funny, you want to make sure nothing is being shaved on the side of the aluminum plunger uh, tube. Like if your bolt sled is rubbing on that, you need to take everything apart and see why that's happening. So that's nice and smooth, buttery smooth actually. That's, I'm pretty surprised. These are just hot off the printer. All right, I'm going to close it up. Remember, this is just a friction seal. There is no O-ring up front. It's just the aluminum barrel against this 3D printed component. Now granted, we tested a lot of different dimensions to achieve this seal, and frankly, I'm quite happy with it. Now, this is awesome. This is gonna blow your mind. So I'm gonna plug the end of the barrel here firmly with my thumb. Make sure that's all the way forward. I'm gonna dry fire. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, and so forth. So you can just count how long. 
I can only hold it so much because that kind of hurts my thumb. And here we go. Yeah, now that is a seal. This is going to be quite the monster. So I'm going to cut the video here. We're going to take it out to the chronograph and see what we got. Okay, here we have the 3D printing components with the aluminum plunger body and barrel installed. Uh, for this test, I am using cut down stock darts. These are brand new elite darts. Now keep in mind that with these 3D printed components, you must use short darts with short dart magazines. However, they work best with this profile of dart, the pointed darts. These darts are designed to be used in pusher breaches of this nature because they will ramp in without bending in half. But for this test, I'm using stock darts and I'll have to sort of ensure they feed correctly. Well, no problem there with the feeding. And first shot. I'm going to hold the priming handle forward and fire. And we have 268.9. Second shot, all right, feeds just fine. Uh, keep in mind, you usually run into feeding issues with the last dart in the magazine, and that tends to do with the way the followers of the single dart mags are designed. All right, here we go. 278.0, and that kind of hurts to prime, but forward priming handles are recommended. Here we go. 275.7 and 270.2 and that's a wrap. So there you have it, 3D printed components with the expanded aluminum plunger body and barrel. Now the end user can experiment with barrel lengths and spring weights, but that's about what you can expect performance wise. With a 20 kilogram spring, even a sloppily sealed blaster should be hitting around 220 to 250. Um, as you saw in a previous clip, the seal on this one is exceptional and we were getting velocities just shy of 280. Um, you can always tweak your darts to fit your barrel better for more performance, but with just stock elite darts, that's what we're getting. With the 14 kilogram spring, um, you should get, you might want to use a slightly shorter barrel and you'll be just below 200. So if you want something that fires faster with a pump grip, I would recommend the 14 kg spring. If you want max power, go with the 20. Thanks for watching.